Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ascendancy Quest for Dominance. This game plays two to four players, takes roughly two hours to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Ascendancy, you're going to be attempting to play as one of the many warring clans for Castoria. Your objective is to gain 11 Ascendancy points before the other clans, and if you can do so, you will reign supreme of the land for the next 99 years. However, be prepared, there are other clans attempting to do the same thing, and in order to gain those points, those points is going to be roughly challenging for you. You'll be utilizing your mana shrines, your tower, defeat monsters, summon guardians, complete quests, and utilize spell and artifact cards to achieve your goal. If you're able to do so before the other players, you will win the game and control the land. So let's go ahead and get started in the game. I'll show you how to set the game up, how of course to play, and then of course my review. So there's a bit of setup for the game, so just bear with me as we go through it. The first thing you'll do is you'll take the game board and you'll set it up so that the board creates kind of a square. Then you're going to take all the tiles and you'll place them down randomly onto the board with a few rules. The first rule is that each of the corners is going to be empty because those are where the starting players will place their spaces and start their towers with their heroes. Make sure that there are no paths ever blocked so that players can always go through and the spaces that have the kind of blocked skeletons on them are going to not be able to be crossed through so never have it so that there is more than one attached to another one. Additionally, if you want a shorter played game, make sure that at least two monster tiles are attached to each other. And uh, remember to make sure to place a uh, arrangement so that the board is kind of fair and even. After you've placed the board and of course uh, gathered all of the cards, you'll be taking each of the decks and placing them within reach of all players. You're going to have the mana decks, which are going to be arranged in separate piles that are just going to represent the di different types of mana you can get in the game. You're going to have your quest cards, you're going to have your spell cards, you're going to have your enchantment cards, and of course your loot cards. Make sure that they're all visible and available. After that, you're then going to go ahead and set up the different monsters. You're going to place the different monster squares separate from the game board and place each of the different monsters on each of their tiles. Make sure the dice and tokens are available for each player within reach, and then give each player a player board. Each player is going to be receiving four guardians, three dice they'll be using for stats for their, uh, their specific guardian stats, their defense, and their attack. They'll get a double-sided HP marker. They're going to get three mana shrines and they're going to get five quest cards. They're also going to get towers. They're going to have little tower tokens that will stack with each other and two battle dice as well as their hero. After you've given everybody those required pieces, then you're going to have each player roll a die to determine starting positions. Once you have done so, the player who has rolled the highest will choose their starting position, one of the corners of the board, place down their tile along with placing down their hero and one of their towers to explain that that is their location and that is where they're going to be utilizing to, to basically uh, roll resource die and gain more mana throughout the game. And of course, you're going to begin. The first player is going to roll a die and they're going to summon a monster based on their roll. One through five is one of the first five monsters. If they roll six, it's a wild. Each player will then roll that die and summon any monsters. And if there is a number that's already been rolled, you will ignore that one. You're only going to be using this to summon monsters for the game. And after each player is rolled and all monsters have been spawned onto their correct locations onto the game board, then the first player will begin the game. To begin the game, they're going to start off with those three actions and they'll get into the game play. But that's pretty much how the game is set up. So to begin a turn, the first thing you'll do is check your tower level. If you're at level one, you'll take two of these white resource die, and you're always going to be rolling this enchantment die. If you have a level two, you'll take the lime green along with the two whites and the enchantment die, and so on and so forth. You'll start gathering new resource die that you'll be able to utilize throughout the game, which will give you additional resources. When you've determined how many dice you need, so I'll just go ahead and say that yellow has a tower two level, uh, you're going to take those die and you're going to roll them and you're going to check and see what you get. Now, in general, the white die are typically going to give you mana. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to check, in, check the enchantment die and see what happens. Maybe you're going to draw a specific card, maybe guardians will attack, perhaps you'll steal a mana from another player, or maybe you're going to be able to have, uh, I don't know, uh, HP regained for your champion. Then you're going to check to see if there's any special effects like haste effect that's going to take place because of one of the other die rolls. 
or maybe a monster is going to spawn. Uh, basically, you'll be taking a die roll, checking to see what monster spawns, and of course, if the monster is already there, it will attack adjacent spaces, doing one damage to each of those spaces. And if anything dies from a monster attack, you're going to gain the benefit. Otherwise, though, you're simply going to be getting your mana. And in this case here, I'm going to get two red, and I'm going to get one blue. These mana are what you can utilize in the game to build things. You might be able to, I don't know, build a mana shrine, construct your tower level higher, gather a spell card, or maybe build an artifact. Uh, and these are going to be very useful for you throughout the game. Here are, here are my resource cards. I've now set them aside. And now the next part is I can take an action. I can take up to three actions, actually. And it doesn't matter how many times I take an action as long as I only do up to three on my turn. Now, there's a long list. I've got my handy little cheat sheet here to explain all the different actions so I don't goof up. And the first one is to move a tile. Basically, when you move a tile, you'll take your character and you're going to move it one space. And like I said before, during setup, make sure that you're always able to go throughout the entire board and that nothing is going to block you from being able to move. And that will let you go to any adjacent space next to your hero. The next thing you're going to be able to do is you can attack. Now there are three different things you can attack. You can attack monsters, other heroes, and guardians. The way you'll do that is you'll take your attack die. Based on your attack, you're going to be rolling your die. You're going to be gathering any, any modifiers or benefits of spaces that you're standing on, and you'll check the power level of a monster or a guardian, or you'll check the defense level of the hero you're fighting, and then you're going to see if you are above them. If you're equal to or below, you do nothing. But if you beat them, you are going to be able to gain benefits. Uh, if you beat a monster for the first time, that'll gather you ascendancy, it's going to gather you loot cards. If you battle, battle a guardian, it's going to gather you souls as well as loot cards. And if you beat a hero, you'll gain ascendancy as well, and followed by a bunch of other cool stuff. Usually it's going to be best to battle monsters and heroes, especially if you haven't beat them before, because for each unique new hero and monster you defeat, you'll gain ascendancy, which is the most important thing in the game. And that's what you'll be trying to do to get that 11 points. Uh, and that's basically how battle works. Roll your die, add modifiers, check against defense or power depending on what you're fighting against. If you defeat them, you'll move into their space and remove their character from the board, or if it's a hero, bring them back to their starting position. The next action you can take is you can build a mana shrine. To build a mana shrine, you're going to be checking to see how much mana shrine costs on your board here. You're going to spend that mana that you've gathered from the previous turns that is currently in your hand, as well as, of course, if it requires a soul, spending a soul. And you'll have to place adjacent to your hero onto a mana space. The shrines are going to start on your board, and you get three of them, and when you place them down, they're going to have to go into an adjacent space that has a mana symbol, and that is how you're going to be getting additional mana on your turn other than just your resource die. These are going to be controlled by you, unless another player's guardian is near it, in which case that will stop you. However, you can place your guardians to protect it as well. After that, if you don't want to do something like that, you can go ahead and move on to upgrading a tower. Upgrading a tower is also fairly easy. It's going to tell you on your board here what you need to do based on your tower level. If you already have a level 2, you're going to have to upgrade to a level 3 and then a four, and then a five. Pay the cost associated, take one of your tokens or one of your little miniatures and set it on top to indicate that you have increased your tower level. That is going to allow you to roll more resource die and gain more resources as well as benefits on your turn before you start your actions. The next action you can take is to summon a guardian. It tells you on your board the cost of a guardian and that you can place it adjacent to your character as long as it's on a grassy space or on a mana space. Guardians will stay there and protect those spaces. They're kind of like defending units. They're going to be allowed to gather souls and do some useful things throughout the game. And you'll be placing them out. Obviously, there are better ones than others, and they're going to utilize these different stats and power. And they're going to go onto your board based on the cost of them. Uh, additionally, what you can do is you can buy spell cards as a free action, but to play them, some of them are actually going to cost you mm, a certain uh, amount of actions based on what the card says. So you'll look and check to see if that card has a cost for action-wise, and if not, you can play it and, of course, you can buy it for free. Another thing you can do is generate resources. Remember how I explained that you can place a mana um, tower or mana shrine onto one of these mana areas? Well, you can spend an action to gain mana from that specific location, provided it's not being controlled by another player or blocked, and it will go into your hand. So for instance, here I can take a green mana and I can place it into my hand for an action. 
Another thing I can do is for an action, I can go onto one of these enchantment spaces. I can place my character there, spend an action, and flip over one of these cards. These are world effects that will change the game. Sometimes it will say you can't generate a certain type of mana, other times it will say you can't attack a certain type of player, and sometimes it will say that you can generate double the amount of mana of a specific type. These are useful world effects that will stay in play, but will be removed as new ones come into play. And finally, another action that you can do is you can transfer souls from either your guardians to your hero or your hero to your guardians because you can always spend three souls for one ascendancy point once per turn and it's a way that you can generate more additional resource or more additional victory points in order to win the game. And that's pretty much the different actions you'll take. After that, you're going to pass your turn. The next player is going to roll their resource die, take, one of the, take up to three actions, and then pass their turn. And whoever gets the ascendancy point of 11 first is the winner. Now, there's a bunch of different things that you're going to be doing, you're going to be doing in this game, and I'll try and explain a few of them here before I go into my review, but there are spaces that will give yourself higher defense or additional attack value. There's certain spaces that will you teleport from one space to another. All the different mana spaces on the board are what you can place mana shrines on. It'll also generate you uh, benefits to pay paying for costs. Like if you need to spend an extra yellow but you don't have it, you can move your hero onto a yellow mana space, and that will negate the cost of any of your yellow actions by one. Monster spaces are where you're going to be trying to defeat monsters, and all monsters and guardians and characters have HP, and you'll be attempting to attack them like I explained to reduce their HP down, gaining those benefits that are provided in the rule books. Another thing to note too is you have quest cards. These quest cards are going to give you specific things they want you to do, and most of them are going to be on your turn, and if you can complete them, like for instance if you can kill the Sh Cerebus, uh, uh, at any time on your turn, you'll gain a spell card, an artifact, and an ascendancy point. And you only get five of them, so make sure you use them wisely and try and complete them as quickly as you can, because there's going to be benefits to doing so. If you defeat a monster, or a hero, or a guardian, you're going to take a loot card from the top of this deck here. You'll draw it, you'll check the chart here, and find out where it is that you defeated. So if I defeated a guardian, it's at the bottom here. If I defeated a banshee, it's at the top here. If I defeated a hero, it's right down here. And it'll tell you what you get. And each card is going to be different, and these are ways you can gain ascendancy points as well. In fact, there's a quite a bunch of different ways you can gain ascendancy points. And some of them are going to include finding things in the loot deck, or finding things in your spell deck. Not as rare, not as not more rare not as likely, but it is going to be there and it's going to be able to assist you throughout the game. But regardless, that's basically the idea of the game. Moving around the game board, attempting to gain control and vie for power by utilizing your guardians, attacking other players, uh, completing your quests, and defeating these monsters to gain that 11 point coveted ascendancy point level. If you can do that, you win the game of ascendancy quest for dominance. Okay, let me tell you about my review. So Ascendancy is a resource management type of game that has a tactics slash area control element as well. You're going to be going around the board, you're going to be placing down mana shrines, building up your tower, fighting monsters, fighting other players, attempting to complete quests, gathering loot, gathering artifacts that are going to be useful to you, uh, there's spell cards, there's world effects, all of this stuff is going to be going on. Now the gameplay is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, rolling your dice, gathering the resources that you need, and then utilizing those resources uh, with your actions to build certain things or move your hero around the board to complete your quests. This game is always going to have you be, being able to do something. The game is ever-changing, the board is ever-changing, and there's quite a lot of options throughout the game. You never have to play any one specific way. If you're not a person who's really interested in fighting against other heroes, you can simply go and complete your quests, defeat other monsters, gain benefits and loot, and that can get you to those 11 points. This game is all about variety, so you can do a little bit of everything. And heroes are going to be there for the taking if you could defeat them, as well as monsters and, of course, the guardians. There's ways to turn souls into value, like ascendancy points, just like there's ways to gain victory points or ascendancy points when defeating the monsters and heroes for the first time, which kind of gives you uh, an idea of, like, maybe I don't want to hit this player again. It's not going to be worthwhile to me. There's also cards in the deck that I like that were kind of cool that stated, like, oh, you can't attack this player who has the least amount of points. So you can't kind of pick on one specific player to keep getting benefit. You have to kind of go against everybody to get the most points that you need while utilizing your quest cards. Another thing I, did, I didn't really mention during setup, but I really enjoy about this game, is that each character has a unique function that's basically an ability that you can use at the beginning of the game. One character will start with kind of a level two tower, another character is going to start with their spirit on the board, and these are kind of additional things that make the characters feel a little different in the game as you are playing them. All the miniatures are high quality and very nice. Now, of course, these are resin. This is not what you're going to get. You'll be getting 
getting a, uh, probably a much better quality style uh, print here, so you don't have to worry about them breaking. Uh, you might notice that some of them are a little broken. That's very typical for reviews. This entire thing is a review copy, so it will be different in the copy that you get in the game. So I'm not going to judge it too harshly on its review quality value here. But what I can say is you can tell that they put a lot of time, love, and care into making this prototype to show me what the game is overall going to look like when it is fully manufactured. Even the monsters are really, really cool. They have really high detail. The characters feel different and look different. The monsters can be stronger or weaker. There's different quests that will affect them and what you're going to be needing to do in the game. And there's a d bunch of different types of cards in this game. Utilizing these cards is going to be a benefit to you and it's going to be about choice that is going to drive your function in the game as to how you want to kind of complete your quest for domination. Another thing I do like about this game is the ability to have these mana shrines on the board. These are ways that you can kind of control little portions of the board to gain the mana that you need after rolling these dice. Because the dice in general are random. You might not get the needed resources that you, um, or required resources that you need in order to level up your tower or place out a guardian or perhaps uh, summon a mana shrine gather artifact cards or gather spell cards. And there's also additional ways that you can deal with that mitigation as well. You can go onto certain spaces of the board that will let you do a, do a two to one trade or a three of any type to one trade. And that's ways to kind of regulate your mana in order to get what you need. So there's just a tiny bit of luck when it comes to die rolling for attacking and die rolling for your resources, but it's all mitigated with spaces on the board, with different artifact cards, with different spell cards that you can utilize to benefit you throughout the game. Uh, the attacking function is very simple. Additionally, nice little note to attacking is pretty cool is if you roll a one, you fail regardless. Just like if you roll a six, you hit regardless. So there's always a chance you can succeed even if your opponent's stats are far beyond. Because when you have these loot cards and when you defeat certain things throughout the game, you're gonna get additional stat bonuses based on what you defeat. And at one point, your character might just be overly powerful to the point where you cannot, uh, your, your opponents cannot deal with you. In which case, there's still a way to hit you. There's still a way to deal with you. The artwork for the game is great. I really like this artwork. I really like the stylization of the backgrounds. It all functions and feels pretty cool. Now, of course, like I said, most of all this is not fully um, finished, so I'm not going to judge it too harshly just yet on most of that, but what I can see here going on is really, really excellent. Some of the graphic design can use work, and some of the por portions of the board and maybe portions of these tiles can be kind of put together to a way that feels more of like a board as opposed to just spaces that you're walking onto. Um, but like I said, I I'm not too, too certain because I can see some of this stuff that's really, really cool here, and you can tell the detail on the miniatures is really, really excellent as well. We had a lot of fun playing this game. Um, another thing I can note too is the rule book is going to, uh, it's, it's right now in its kind of prototypey form, so it took me quite a while to gather all the different pieces of information and put it together, but I've seen them, they've been working on it, they take, they've been changing the rules and just mixing things up here, so all the rules I've explained are subject to slight changes, but the overall feel and play of the game is there, and you can feel it throughout the game. There's the attacking, and the defending, and this, there's the building, and it all kind of flows and works together in this really simplistic way. A lot of different choices, but it's really straightforward as to what you want to do. And you have the choice to kind of make up your own mind as to when and how you want to play certain things. I really enjoyed this game. I think this game is going to do well. I'd be pretty shocked if it didn't fun because this thing has a lot to offer for a lot of those players who like those type of arena combat slash area control games with a nice mix of luck and a nice mix of the different types of resources that you can use to kind of create your own little kingdom. Uh, so Ascendancy, um, Quest for Dominance. This is a solid game. I strongly suggest you take a look at it. It'll be on Kickstarter and when it, it will be there, I will have a link down below in the description for you to go ahead and take a look. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ascendancy Quest for Dominance. If you're interested in this game, like I said before, there's a link that will be up uh, in the description when it's on Kickstarter. Until then, I'll have something to their one of their groups or websites that you can go ahead and take a look at. Also, you can go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more just for you of other games, written reviews that are not these ones here. So there's a nice mix-up and variety from other re re reviewers, a little reviewers that are not me. I'll go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button and bell button notification. It greatly does help us out here and we greatly do appreciate it. And if you'd like to watch us play games live on our stream, go ahead and do that as well. Go ahead and check out our stream on 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, on Twitch, and then the day after I'll upload it and edit it to YouTube. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to questing for that ascendancy with you next time.